you know, lately I've had people call me stupid for buying a Porsche and a BMW. I've had Graham Stevens, Stephens, whatever his name is, talk junk. I've had a number of crypto, because this video is going to get a whole bunch of crypto people, because everyone supposedly is getting rich in the crypto space, right? Well, based upon my research, the numbers don't bear that out. It's not true. And, you know, let's have a conversation here. Since I have started to amp things up, I've had a lot of craziness happen. And the last time this happened was just before I actually kind of leveled up a few levels. So I think that's about to start happening again. Uh, Cause essentially I've got a lot of people coming for me, got people making videos, got people critiquing videos, but here's the truth. The information that I provide for you guys is based upon facts. And if you have the facts, this is going to lead you to make better decisions. And yesterday I had a clown, a lying fool. Yes, you are a lying fool, open source, open edge, whatever your name is. Because essentially if you come to this channel telling me I made all this money on crypto, I'm going to ask you to provide receipts. I consistently provide receipts. So I want to see some proof versus you just, oh yeah, I made all this money. Cause essentially this clown said he made, went from 50,000 to 700,000 from since February. Um, Bitcoin has boomed, but it hasn't boomed like that. And you know, I'm still waiting. I've left in my, I've, I've seen no receipts. I see no receipts. So essentially there is this false sense of Everyone is getting rich in the crypto space, right? So I've dived into the numbers and let's go ahead and talk about it. If you bought crypto early and held on, you did well. Does this mean you're a financial genius? Nope. It means you got lucky. There are people who win the lottery. So it happens. There are people. So I did some research and there's like a hundred thousand people who are millionaires based upon their cryptocurrency holdings. And I, I started to like, oh, that's a lot of people, a hundred thousand. That's a lot of people. And then what I did is I went ahead and I looked up the number of millionaires because this isn't just people who are holding uh, crypto in the United States. This is worldwide. This isn't just the United States. So I went ahead and looked around at the number of millionaires around the world. And this is something that is really, really interesting because you, you, you hear all of this stuff that people are making all this money in crypto and you're minting all these crypto millionaires. I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you the numbers. I'm going to let you decide. So take a wild guess and put it in the comments. How many crypto millionaires represent overall millionaires? Because it is supposed to be this, tsunami of millionaires, literally people are waking up and they're a crypto millionaire. Everyone's getting this money and they're, you know, this, this fool, he was lying. It's like, I'm gonna be a millionaire in a year. Once again, if you bought crypto back in the day, you know, pre 2017 held on to it and accumulated a lot. Yeah. You're a crypto millionaire. But once again, it's not that many people. Like if I had known when I had bought my crypto, I would have bought like 5,000 coins if I had known this was going to happen, but I didn't. And no one knew, no one knew, no one had a crystal ball. People were guessing and some people got lucky. Some people got very, very lucky. All right. So there are 46, almost 47 millionaires in the world. Okay. So there are a hundred thousand crypto millionaires. Okay. So the crypto millionaires represent 0.2% of all millionaires. So that means 99.8% of the millionaires in the world got their money outside of crypto. It <clears throat> Google this, go ahead and do the research. So if all of these, this, this tsunami of people are becoming crypto millionaires, let me tell you who are the crypto millionaires. The people who bought a lot of crypto early 
If you're new to crypto and being new, you got in in 2020, more than likely you didn't have enough money to get enough crypto. Cause let's say uh, 2020 Bitcoin was like $20,000, right? What do we know? How many people here have an extra $5,000 just to throw into an investment? Not that many. How many people have an extra $10,000 to throw into an investment? Not that many. How many people have an extra $20,000 to throw into an investment? So $20,000 would have got you one Bitcoin. One. If you had it. If you had it. And let's say Bitcoin is 62,000. So your one Bitcoin would have gone up three X. Not even if you had the 20,000, even if you bought the one Bitcoin, you still wouldn't be a millionaire. You will still be a long way. Here, here's the thing. There's this talk that Bitcoin is going to replace gold as a store of value. Gold has a market cap of $11 trillion. Bitcoin has a market cap of one trillion dollars. So if you if you wanted to ride that wave and you wanted to get that money and let's say Bitcoin actually replaced gold as a store of value and achieved the 11 trillion market cap. You know how much money you would need right now invested in Bitcoin to get to 3.5 million. You would need $350,000 right now invested in Bitcoin. So if that was to occur, you would have 3.5 million. So this is why I knew this fool was lying that he invested $50,000 and now has 700,000. Bitcoin isn't appreciating that fast. All right. So once again, it is a simple lie that everyone is getting rich in cryptocurrency and you have a lot of people who are lying. Once again, if you come on this channel talking about I'm making all this money, I'm going to ask for receipts. I'm going to ask you to send me some proof because it's the internet. There is this old meme many, many years ago. It was a dog by this uh, phonograph and the phonograph is a record player with a big funnel. And it, it was like on the internet, no one knows I'm a dog. So you have a lot of people who are lying about their crypto wealth. A lot of people lying about their crypto wealth. So essentially I'm just giving you go ahead and Google it. There's like a hundred thousand people and let's go ahead and double it. Let's say there was 200,000 people who became cryptocurrency millionaires. It would still be point two point five percent of all millionaires. So it's simply not true. Now I'm going to tell you who is really getting rich off crypto people who are already rich. The Winkle Voss twins, their father had enough money to send not one, but two kids to Harvard. Their father is worth $400 million. Their father started a tech company. Okay. So the Winkle Voss trends would be, multi-millionaires without Bitcoin. And if you would look at the people with the largest cryptocurrency holdings, they're people who are already rich. So this whole notion that some people get lucky in a ride the Bitcoin wave. Yes. Some people got lucky, but the majority of folks, and I honestly feel that that wave has passed because for you to get into cryptocurrency now, you got to have some money. You got to have some loan con. There was this uh, article, Jim Cramer, the stock guy, he bought crypto, he bought Bitcoin at 12,000 and he recently sold it and paid off one of his mortgages. Jim Cramer is like 66 years old. So um, I'm going to run a thesis about you, by you guys. All right. This is my thesis and I'm going to be really clear and be distinct. I feel that if you and your wife, say your name is Steve and your wife's name is Jill and you make 30,000 and your wife makes 30,000. So together y'all make $60,000 a year, um, which puts you in the income danger zone. So let's say you went to your wife and said, Hey, let's start a small business. And you and your wife started a small service business working on the weekend. So you're working seven days a week. And this small business made $500 a month, $500 a week, 
500, not a thousand dollars a day, none of this wild internet scam stuff, but 500 bucks every weekend. So you were making an additional $2,000. And then you spent the next two to three years cleaning up all of your financial mistakes, like buying financing cars, being in debt, getting rid of the student loan. You spend these two years because this $2,000 a month represents $24,000 a year, which moves your income up to $84,000 a year. So it takes you two years to get out of that mess. And then you establish a long-term emergency fund. You establish a short-term emergency fund, and then you establish a family operating account. Now you're, this is year three. You and your wife started this when you were 30 and now you're in year three. Now your business, you, you've been, you, you peeped out a little savage finance. You, you took the art of holding and now you have built a business if you hired employees and you still have your job. So your employees, now your small business, which is let's say three years old and after expenses paying employees, it puts $50,000 in your pocket. But because now you and Jill have employees, you, you go to your jobs Monday through Friday and then you manage your business. So now this business, so your income is now 110. You're three years in, three years in. You, you've got all the things soft. So now you start putting $3,000 a month into stocks. So from 30 to 33, you now have a stock portfolio of $36,000. And then let's fast forward. Your business grows a little bit each year. So year three, you made 50,000. Year four, you made 60,000. Year um, five, you made 70,000. Year eight, you made, is, yeah, year five, year eight, you made 100,000. So you've been in business eight years and now you're 100,000. So you're between your jobs and your business, you're doing $160,000 a year. And at this time, you have a stock portfolio that's roughly $300,000 and you have no debt. Now your business, now you're still putting this $3,000 away, but now because your business is making more money, now you can use that money for your lifestyle, yet still maintaining a robust investment um, paradigm and then vote, you know, a schedule. So now, you are 40 years old and you, your business is doing 150. You still have your job. So you have an income of $210,000 a year. You're investing $4,000 per month. And you and your wife had this bright idea that you were going to get another house, but keep your first house because you, you know, it's, you got it such a good deal. So your first house is now cash flowing at $750 per month. Now you have another house and then two years later, you keep this newer house, then you turn that into a rental. And now you have two rental properties that are cash flowing at about 1200 bucks a month and you have your business and you have your jobs and you're 40 years old. Then you keep this going on for the next decade, 20 years from 30 to 50. So now your portfolio is a seven figure portfolio. You have two rental properties and your first rental property is now paid off. So the first rental property is cash flowing at 1500 per month. You refinance your second um, mortgage to reduce your monthly payment. So now this property is cash flowing at 1100. So that's $2,600 in rental income you have from your two rental properties. Then you have your small business that is cranking out doing about 200 K a year. And at this point, you and your wife have quit your jobs. You don't have your jobs. So you got one, two rental properties, putting 26, 2700 bucks per month in your pocket. You have a small business that you have set up because you took Savage Finance, you know, you, you are the holding and it pretty much runs on autopilot. So you and your wife have two rental properties, a million dollar stock portfolio, and you're essentially retired at 50. You can't do that with Bitcoin. You can't do that with Bitcoin. You can't do that with just stocks. You can't do that. So this is my thesis. If you're in income danger zone, number one, you're better off starting a small business, working hard and let this notion go of that. You're going to quit your job, that you're going to be able to have all of this free time, make all of this money and be on the beach. 
deploy the do more principle because you know <clears throat> this this whole notion and like i said google this fact check me on this not that many people are becoming crypto millionaires not that many people as the lying fool crypto edge whatever his name was it's like they're making more money in the year actually here's something else and this is a statistical fact if you have cryptocurrency and you hold on to it and you don't sell it and you don't realize your gains you've made no money you've made no spendable cash you've made no money none whatsoever none so it is false to say that you're making more money than me when um i know the numbers i'm in the i'm, I'm in the one percent bro i'm in the top actually i'm in the top 0.5 percent in terms of income earned i make over seven figures a year so there's no one in cryptocurrency other than the big boys who are making that kind of money and i'm talking about the people who have 400 500 600 700 thousand coins that ain't you bruh with your fraction of a coin you don't even own a whole coin and you're you're, you're so you're not going to get that rapid appreciation that you would need a portfolio of 100 150 200 coins because like if you had 100 coins which would have put you at 20,000 per coin that would put you at like i believe 2 million so bitcoin is going to 62 so if you had a 100 coin and it had 2 million now you would be worth 6 million because it 3x but you would need to have those 100 coins not that many people have the 100 coins and the majority of the wealth you know the once again the winklevoss twins who are bitcoin billionaires they were already rich they were rich at birth so the rich get richer you want to know why because they have the money like right now i'm, I'm like uh, i will talk about this like i'm starting this car dealership and i recently found out that sandy springs has they're not going to allow any more new car dealerships in the city of sandy springs i just found that out last night so i would have to use a property that's already zoned for automotive to actually start a dealership here in sandy springs so this is going to be very very interesting so uh, i got a plan so i'm going to write it out and i'm going to present it to uh, the group in the art of holding in the corporate toolbox because uh, th this is going to be interesting it's going to be interesting but once again here's my thesis i have hundred and fifty thousand dollars right that's literally just chilling in my checking account my thesis is i'm going to take that hundred and fifty thousand dollars and I'm going to turn it to 2.5 million within three years. There is no investment that you can buy that will do that, including Bitcoin, including Bitcoin, including Bitcoin there. Because essentially, first of all, you, you got to have the money to get to buy complete coins. You know, this buying a fraction of a coin. There was a guy years ago. He was saying at least get one coin. And I, I kind of see his rationale on that, but most people don't even have one coin. They have a fraction of a coin. Like right now I'm in a position. If I wanted to, I can buy 10 bitcoins. I can buy 10 of them pretty easy, but I would take $620,000 to park it into Bitcoin when I can take 150 and create a business and start earning spendable cash. You see what I'm saying? And th this is the thing, because you know, you, you can present this, you know, people say, well, starting a business is so hard. Look, you can start an eBay business and make 300 to 500 bucks a week, keep your job with very little startup cost, and you don't have to be a business juggernaut. You don't have to have a brilliant business plan and you don't have to spend any money. You could go YouTube University. You could just sit here and start watching how to start an eBay business here on YouTube, get completely schooled up in a few weeks, start your eBay business, literally start making money your first week and 300 to 500 a week in resale, 
profit is very, very doable. You don't have to be a business genius. You don't have to have business credit. And this can start you on your journey. This is how I got started. I got started in resale. My first business, I was selling used office furniture, GC Solutions. And then I matriculated that to selling new office furniture. But I didn't like the margins because see, this is one of the things that happens. When you're exposed to something, it alters you. So I was exposed to selling a lot less um, used office furniture and making way more money. So I was like, hey, where can I go out and get some of this used stuff? So I actually went ahead and got into the storage auction business and I learned so much about business. I learned about customers, you know, so you could get in resale and get started and build a business over the next 20 years and get it up to six figures. Because essentially, you know, the agenda here is to create 100,000 corporate citizens uh, with a start creating a business with a net profit of $250,000. Because at that level, you have the money to become an investor of significance. You, you're at this point where you can become a real investor because, you know, uh, I've crunched the numbers. I did it. You know, 100 bucks per month for 45 years, you know, depending. Also, I had some people kind of push back on me on the, you know, the, the performance. If you've been in the stock market for the last 30 years, your overall returns are 6.8%. The last 11 years, 11, 11 years, last 10 years, your, your returns have been 12%, but we've been in the bull market. So if you are in the stock market, you got to count all of that. You've got to count all of that. You, you cannot look like, okay, we're only going to count the last 10 years. So people who've been in the market for 30 years have had a return of 6.8%. And the people who've been in the market 20 years have had a better return because of these last 11 years. So once again, you can debate me, you can talk about, oh, it's so hard to start a business. No, it's not. No, it's not. You can start an eBay business, you can start a service business, there's a multitude of businesses you can start for very little money and leverage this into upper more income and keep your job. Like, you know, I see all of these YouTube advertisements like, you know, you're gonna join this in three, four weeks, you're gonna quit your job. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So this is my thesis. If you are in the income danger zone of less than $50,000 a year, single person income, you will be better off starting a small business, an eBay business, a service business, even a car wash, than you would be investing in the stock market or Bitcoin because for this simple reason, you don't have enough money to move the needle. I have a video on Savage Finance where this guy's investing $5,000 per month and he doesn't have a seven figure portfolio. He, you know, eventually he keeps investing 5,000 per month. He will, but see the magic is time in the market. Because like our risk journey, they went ahead and they got like 2.5 million, I believe, in eight years. The majority of that money was contributions. It wasn't interest. And interest is what happens when your money's working. So they worked for their money and that's what got them to build their position. And eventually, because they're no longer working like that, the markets, the interest will be more than what they put in there, but essentially, I've shown you the models when you are investing and you're investing a lot of money like this guy, you know, he's doing $60,000 a year and he doesn't have a seven figure portfolio. So this, this is one of the things that cracks me up. All these people who make like $40,000 a year and they're like 30 something and they have this seven figure portfolio. I was watching Dave Ramsey and there was this 24 year old guy who has a $550,000 investment portfolio. You want to know how he got there? Someone left it to him. Someone left it to him when he was seven years old. And this is one of the things like if someone tells you that someone's 30 something and they have a seven figure portfolio, I bet one of those things happened because they, they had some wildly successful investment. Because just looking at the numbers, 
to be 30 years old and you, let's say you started investing at 25 and you're 35, you've only been investing 10 years. You would have, you know, you ain't going to do that on 40,000. You're not going to get a seven figure portfolio on $40,000 a year. This guy is investing $5,000 per month and he doesn't have a second figure portfolio yet. And I, I crunched the numbers. I figure he's been doing this about six or seven years and his portfolio was 440, 430,000. So he's got to, his plan is to retire in five years when he's 40 and based upon, you know, it, it should be um, a seven figure portfolio and then he'll have his rentals and rent's going to go up. So this should give him income. But <clears throat> essentially, if you want to make money, you got to you got to increase your income, man. You got to increase your income. And this whole notion of like all everyone's getting rich in cryptocurrency. It is a flat out lie. Are there people getting rich in cryptocurrency? Yes. And I guarantee you, if you do the research, the majority of the folks who are getting rich in crypto already were people who had money. It is not some random dude who was making $30,000 and then, you know, there, there's a few of them. <clears throat> they got in crypto early. But the reality is the majority of the people who are making money in cryptocurrency already had money. Which is, you know, back to my point. The best investors are business owners or people who are already rich. These are the best investors. These are the best people. So once again, stop with the lies. Cause like I will challenge you and you know, you go ahead and like, Oh, I made all this money. And then someone was like, Hey, I invested uh, 2,200 bucks in Dogecoin. Now it's up to 4,000 in seven months. Okay. Can you spend that money? And let's talk about spendable cash. Let's go with the, the, the married couple that started this business. And once their business exceeds the money that they were putting into their investments, that becomes spendable cash. They can use that money to increase their lifestyle. So, you know, to me, if you're already rich, <clears throat> if you're in income zone number three, making 150 to 200 K and you want to buy yourself a Bitcoin or get yourself, you know, you're in a position where you can invest 60,000 a year in the stock market and still have enough money to live a decent life. You can do dumb stuff like finance cars and um, have a little debt. And then 150, 200 K you can still invest because you have so much money. But if you're in a 50 K, mm -mm, no, 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 no. And, you know, uh, I did this on the, the treadmill and that the, the scan, the, the, the uh, memory card that I use for the camera, something's wrong with it. So my computer doesn't recognize it. So it's trash. The car is about three, four years old. So I guess I now know how long these cars last, but Hey, if you want to <clears throat> go ahead and start making more money, and grow your business and build your business, go below, get in the art of holding, price isn't going up until May, jump in that, and we're gonna explore, we're gonna, you know, cause I'm gonna give you all of the dirty down details of me starting up this car business because a plan is starting to shape up and I'll be talking about that in class today. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.